Hello, this is Roy with SecureM Systems and Technical Support. Here today to show you how to do a lock replacement without reprogramming the locks themselves. So in this scenario we would assume that let's say it's a two-door safe and we have lock one and then lock two. And uh, right now they're currently set at default so let's go ahead and start with changing those default codes. Uh, just so I can show you in an essence how you can drop in two new locks into a safe without replacing and or programming um, any of the codes back to those locks. You can do it all through what we call our mechanical reset method. So without further ado, let's see how that's done. So first thing we want to do, since it is at defaults, we want to go ahead and open the lock. And then we're going to go ahead and go up to change code. So we're going to change the code from 123456 to 444444. Repeat. So ID01 is now 444444. And uh, just for good measure, let's go ahead and roll ID, uh, ID6. I'll make this one seven 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 and repeat alright so the purpose of that is that we now have both a user code and we changed the ID01 code uh, and with that being done uh, let's say in this scenario again just to re recap we're gonna say what, both these locks failed but the doors open we want to replace them uh, but we don't want to go and reprogram those two codes. Um, to do that, you would first disconnect the battery from the entry pad. Once you disconnected the battery, we're going to start with lock one and unplug and remove it. And we're going to disconnect lock two and remove it. We have our two default locks. These actually don't have any codes in them right now whatsoever. You can see there they haven't been reset. No tricks here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and acclimate them to the entry pad and transfer those user codes all through the mechanical reset method. So to do this, I want to go ahead and plug in the four pin cable into lock one. And we're going to go ahead and Actually, pardon me, well, I think the easier route would be to probably leave it disconnected. Let's put in the battery in first, just because this will make it a lot easier without having to use, need two people. So now the battery's inserted, we're going to make this lock one. And what I'm doing right now is I'm putting the paper clip right through the reset hole, which if you peel it away, it's much easier to do rather than guessing. As you can see, it's right there. I don't know if it'll autofocus or not. But that's where the reset hole is. So pressing the reset button about three, four times. Press and hold. While holding, I'm going to plug in the four pin cable and continue to hold for about four to five seconds. Now I can release. And let's go ahead and try lock one. So we're going to put in the super code and select lock one. And as you heard, it opened lock one. Now the real trick is let's see if it took the programming as well. So we're going to try user, uh, the user that we programmed with seven. As you can see, the user is present in the lock. So ID01, also present in lock one. So we didn't have to reprogram anything. We actually dropped in a new lock, kept the same entry pad with all the users pre-programmed and all the settings there. Just did a simple mechanical reset, which pulls all the config back and uh, puts it back in the lock. Pretty cool. Now we're moving on to lock two to make sure we can do both inner and outer doors. So to do that, again, it's the same procedure. You can leave lock one connected. 
I'm going to peel away the QC sticker to make this a little easier. I'm going to press the reset button about three, four times. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm holding it. Insert the four pin cable into lock two. And now I'm going to release. And now we're going to enter the super code. And instead of selecting lock one like we did previous, we're going to select lock two. And it opens right up. So again, we're going to try that new user that we created, see if that's in lock two. And then lock two. And it looks like I might have not held it down enough. It said unauthorized, or the programming is not allowing it to authorize. I think it's actually pre-programmed to not allow IDO4 to access the lock two. But as you can see, lock, lock two can be opened with ID01, which we changed the code to fours. And let's see if we can authorize. So we're authorizing the second user there to access lock two. Let's see if that works now. And it does. So actually, that's another great example. It actually pulled the config from the entry pad um, without me even knowing that the entry pad had that programming set, where it didn't allow the second user that we, the new user we created, access to lock two. So even with the reset method, it still knew right away after being acclimated to the new lock that that's not allowed. And it was still working, as you saw with ID01. So again, I hope you learned uh, a lot from this video. This is how you would replace a multi-lock door setup with um, a bad lock, one or two, and not have to reprogram anything. Uh, this would apply literally to our whole ProLogic series and our ScanLogic series. And uh, this will not work with our safe logic, but it's because of it being a digital signal. So once again, my name is Roy Morris, work for SecureM Systems, technical support. If you have any questions or requests on how to do uh, programming or setting it up or replacement or diagnostics, please give me a call. Until the next video, have a great one.